Today we're going to look at solving applications. Now applications are simply word problems and most students will admit the hardest part of a word problem is knowing how to set it up. Well today I'm going to show you some linear models or some linear formulas and equations that you can use that will always help you with certain types of applications. This first one we're going to solve is how to calculate the basic cost when you are given a fixed cost and a variable cost. Now the fixed cost is a cost that you have to pay no matter what and the variable cost means that's the cost that say the more miles you travel the more you have to pay or the more bags of potato chips you buy the more you have to pay. So that can vary from something really small to something really large. The variable cost is actually going to be the cost per unit. So the word per, P-E-R, is important to look for. Now in this example, it says the city cabs charges a $1.75 pickup fee and a $1.25 per mile traveled. Diego's fare for a cross-town cab ride is $14.25. So how far did he travel in the cab? Remember how I said the word per, P-E-R, was important? Here it is. 125 per mile. So that 125 is going to be our variable cost. The other amount of money would be a $1.75 pickup fee. That is called the fixed cost. And the larger number, the 1425, would be the total cost of the entire cab ride. So let's go ahead and let's solve that. 1.75 plus 1.25x equals 14.25. We'll solve for x. First, I'll move over the 1.75 and change the sign. So I'm left with 1.25x equals 1250. Then, to get the final answer, I will divide by 1.25 on both sides. Now remember you may use a calculator if it would be easier with all these decimals. So x is equal to 10. And that means how far did Diego travel? He traveled 10 miles. Now here's the example of another common question. A price increase or decrease. When you're dealing with an increase, use this first formula. You'll take 100%. That represents full price. If you're going to increase it, you're going to add a percentage of an increase times the X value, and that will be your selling price. However, if you're going to decrease a price, like a good sale, you'll have 100% minus the percent of decrease times the X equals the selling price. On this first problem, you will notice the word reduction that is underlined. A word like reduction means it is a decrease. So I will have 100% minus the 30% price reduction, X. And that will equal the purchase price of this computer, which is $840. And they want to know what's the computer's price before the reduction. That's the original price. Well, let's work this out. 100 minus 30 is 70. Now, that's going to be a percent. We never leave a percent in an equation. We go ahead and change it to a decimal. So move the understood decimal point over two places. 70% then will be decimal 70, 0, 0.70. Then we will divide by the 0 0.70 on both sides since it's the coefficient and x will equal 1200. So what was the computer price before that sale, that reduction? It was $1200. Now let's look at the second example. On this one you have the word markup. So if it's markup that means it's a price increase. So I have a hundred percent plus now the percentage of increase is 
Then I will put the X, which represents the original cost or price, and that's going to equal our new selling price, which is $474.10. Now let's solve it. 100 plus 10 is 110%. Yes, something can cost more than 100%, theoretically speaking, because it's been marked up. Now remember, we convert the percentage to a decimal. So that would be 1.10x equals 474 and 10. Then I divide by the 1.10. Again, feel free to use a calculator if the decimals are tricky. And when I do that division, I will end up with 431. So what was the dealer's cost originally of that refrigerator? It was $431. Another common problem that we see in the college algebra class is a dual investment. This is when you take a pot of money and you're going to split it up two ways uh, into two different accounts. You'll normally be given an original amount of money, like here. You inherited $5,000, but the stipulation was you had to have the money invested two ways, in 9% and 11% annual interest. So my first interest rate would be 9%. My second interest rate would be 11%. How much did you invest at each rate if the total interest earned was 487? Now the interest will go back here where it says 487 in this formula. Now let's set it up. I have 9% times the X plus 11%. Now this one's interesting. This one is total investment minus X. Total investment is your total sum of money. So that would be 5,000, which was the original total amount, minus the X. And that equals the interest, 487. Now change both those percentages to a decimal. So move it over, that'd be 0.09x. Move that over, that'd be 0.11. 5,000 minus x equals 487. Let's see what we have. We have 0.09x. Now we're going to have to do the distributive property here. And so when we do the distributive property, we get 550. When we multiply that and then multiply that, we get a minus 0.11x. We need to combine the like terms that are on the same side. So positive 0.09 and negative 0.11. That will give me a negative 9, 10, 11, 0.02x. Then I need to move this 550 over. So remember, I'm going to subtract 550. So let me go up here. Negative 0.02x equals. Now I'll just take my calculator here. And let's see. 487 subtract 550 is a negative 63. I divide by negative 0.02. Decimals are a little bit tricky, so let's go ahead and I can divide that, divide by negative 0.02, and that gives me $3,150. Now that first answer goes with your first percentage rate. So the amount of money I had at 9% would have been $3,150. That's your first answer. To get the second answer, you need to take the original pot of money, $5,000, Subtract the 3150. Again, you can just use your calculator if you prefer. And that will give you 1850. That amount of money goes with the 11%. So that's the second answer. Now, another example we see commonly used is the perimeter of a rectangle. The perimeter of a rectangle deals with a rectangular shape, and I always like to draw the picture. And the longest side is going to be the length, and the shortest side is going to be my width. So my width, short side, my length is the long side. It says the length of a rectangular basketball court is 44 feet more than the width. 
Go ahead and let your width be x every time in these. Then your length is 44 feet more than. More than is what basic operation? You're right. It's addition. So that's 44 plus x. Now the perimeter is 288. So we're going to put it in the formula. So twice the length would be twice 4, 4 plus x plus twice the width would be 2 times the x equals the perimeter. Again, this is the formula that's given at the top of the screen. That's an 8 and that's an 8. Now, let's go ahead and do the distributive property. 2 times 44 is 88 plus 2x plus 2x equals 288. Combine my like terms on the same side, so that's 88 plus 4x equals 288. Move that 88 over and change the sign. So that's going to give me 200 and then divide by 4. Divide by the coefficient. So x is equal to 50. Now remember x is only one dimension. x is going to be the width. So the width of this is 50 feet. That's one of your answer. To get the second answer, you have to take your 50 and plug it into the length. So 44 plus 50 equals 94. That's the second answer, which is the length. Now before we leave this word problem section, not only do you need to be able to solve with linear equations, there's also an equation that's popular and famous to just about everybody, and that's the Pythagorean theorem. It's not linear because remember the exponent has to be 1 to be linear, but it is used a lot in upper level mathematics. So let's look at the Pythagorean theorem. Now the Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now what that's referring to is in any right triangle with sides a and b and the diagonal which is called the hypotenuse, is the C. So it can also be thought of as side squared plus side squared equals hypotenuse squared. Let's use it to solve this word problem. We have a rectangular park, and it says it's 10 miles long, so the length is 10. It's 5 miles wide, so the shorter side is 5. It says how long is a pedestrian route that runs diagonally across the park. If you're going diagonally, you will notice that that forms a right triangle, just like there in the Pythagorean theorem. So my A and B would be these two numbers. My C is the diagonal unknown. So when I do A squared plus B squared equals C squared, I will set that up as 10 squared plus 5 squared equals c squared. Now 10 squared is 100, 5 squared is 25, and c squared looks like that. So I have 125 is c squared. But I just want c. I don't want c squared. So to solve here, I will actually take the square root of both sides. That will give me c equals, and I can put that in my calculator and round off. So remember to do the square root on the TI-30X calculator. You do the second button and then the x squared, and I put in 125. That will give me 11.18033. Now I want to round that off to the nearest tenth. So that would just be like this. Notice that there's an 8 behind that 1, so I'm going to round that up. If it's 5 or above, round it up. So that would be 11.2 miles long. But that's not the only answer. We also want that answer in radical form. So let me go down here and get a little scratch paper. Okay, a little more room. If you recall, to take the square root of 125, what I can do is divide that number by a perfect square, if it's not a perfect square itself. If you think about the perfect squares, 25 is a perfect square, 
and 125 divided by 25 is 5. So I can actually break down that 125 as 25 times 5. Now if I take the square root of 25, it's 5, and the other 5 stays under the radical. My second answer then in radical form is going to be 5 square root of 5. So there will normally be two different ways you can give the answer in a Pythagorean theorem problem. Hopefully these linear uh, formulas and the Pythagorean theorem will help you a lot as you encounter word problems.